Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing The Howling by Gary Branner. Now this is what the movie The Howling of the same name is based on. And the book was published in the year of 1977 when the movie was released in 1981. So there's a few years between the two. It's not the case where they published a book in the same time as the movie to drum up sales and interest. No, in this case, the book came first. And in case you're wondering, at this point in time, I am still unclear whether I have seen the entirety of The Howling. And when I say that, I mean that I can distinctly remember the ending where the main character transformed into a werewolf while on the news and live on air but I cannot remember the whole movie, the rest of the movie. I have watched clips of the werewolf transformations on YouTube and they look fine, they look good. Some of the shots look like that the head of the werewolf is going to explode but hey, it's what they could do and it did look really cool but this isn't going to be a comparison between the movie and the book because as I've just told you I'm not sure whether I've actually seen the movie or not so for this video I'm just going to be talking about the book so before I go any further guys I just want to put up a massive serious trigger warning here that this book focuses on sexual assault and abuse right on chapter one so if you are triggered by that and if that's not something that you are feeling comfortable about reading then i would skip this book it is in extreme detail it goes into what exactly happened to our leading lady and the trauma that she went through so be warned about that guys also this book is extremely sexualized it does have loads of sexual scenes in this when the characters are in their human form and also there's a sex scene with a couple of werewolves as well so yeah whatever floats your boat i suppose before i go any further guys this is going to be a spoiler free video and of course this is just going to be my own thoughts and feelings regarding the book so guys i have finally did it i have found a book that has a karen in it this novel's main character is called Karen, and not once did she ask to speak to someone's manager. <laughs> I'm only kidding, guys. I'm only kidding. In fact, I googled Karen, and the and uh, no joke, this is what I found out. The Scandinavian origin of Karen means pure. And just out of interest, I googled what my name meant, David. It's got a biblical reference, which means beloved so hey that's sweet i suppose so the book opens up with our main character karen who is a everyday housewife she is married to a loving husband called roy and for the most part everything seems to be okay roy goes off and has a job so he goes off and does his own thing every every single day and Karen is left in the house to be a housewife. But one day, as I said in my trigger warning, she is sexually assaulted to an extreme level and the book does go in graphic detail about what happens to her. It is extremely upsetting and graphic. As you can imagine, it traumatizes her and she kind of shrinks into herself. So after this tragic event in Karen's life, she and Roy go to see all these medical professionals and they say that the best thing for them to do is to go off and stay in a secluded area and to basically regroup and to heal and to discuss their feelings and to also get away from the hustle and bustle. I can't believe I've actually said that of the city. So they 
eventually decides to rent a house in a town called Drago. Now, well, hopefully I've said that right. Drago has a past, I will say that. I won't say exactly what it is because it's made clear at the start of the book and throughout the book. But in a nutshell, it's a very secluded town. They kind of welcome outsiders, but the people in that town are very odd. They are very unusual. They kind of stop and stare at people and don't talk and interact with people. The kids and the adults. And the town seems to be closed. Everyone keeps their doors and windows shut. Even the shops there, or the stores rather, aren't, don't actually look like they're, they're open for business. All the curtains are shut, all the lights are turned off, all that type of stuff. But, surprisingly, everyone in the town seems very friendly and open and... Is very welcoming of Karen and Roy. We also discover a new character called Chris. Now Chris is a friend of Karen and Roy's. He's a very close friend of theirs and I think he's a bit protective over Karen. At this point Karen is trying to put this sexual assault um, behind her and well and trying to cope with it as best she can. She's still very wary of people around her, specifically men around her. She kind of like steps back away from them and is a bit more cautious of them. And this even affects her love life with Roy and their sexual activities. She describes in the book that when they are performing these acts, that she is pretending to have fun and being pleasured. And she does this because she wants to please Roy. But secretly, she, I wouldn't say she doesn't like it, but yeah, she's still drawn to that tragic event that happened in her life. But she loves Roy, she really does love him. And Roy, in his own way, loves Karen. But there is that kind of barrier that's between them that throughout the book, Neither one of them really can you know, knock it down. So as you should know that this book is about werewolves. And in the town of Drago, there is a werewolf. I won't say whether it's one or whether it's several. But when Karen is in the house at night and laying in her bed and wandering around or doing what she is doing at night, she is always hearing this howling out in the woods. And she tells Roy about this and Roy kind of brushes off saying, oh, it's maybe just a wind or maybe it's an owl or, hey, we're in the woods. We're actually hearing loads of weird ass noises. And Karen interacts with some of the people in the town of Drago. One of them, she plays, I'm not sure, poker or some sort of card game with this nice woman that owns this shop. And she seems really, really nice. And they kind of have a good interaction with each other. There is a doctor that keeps on giving Karen these pills. These unknown tablets that may or may not be affecting her in some way. There is this attractive female shop owner that catches the eye of Roy. And there is a element of him cheating on his wife so again if that may trigger you and there is also a sheriff in this town I can't remember what his name is but he's not the official sheriff he he has appointed himself as the sheriff of Drago because Drago as I said is a very secluded town that keeps it that keeps itself to itself and because everyone in this town knows each other they don't really need to have a law enforcement or a police department. So this man has assigned himself as the sheriff of Drago and everyone accepts this. But he's a very oddball character. <laughs> he tries to do his best for the town and do what he thinks that is right. 
even though it may seem very unusual at the time. And when Karen tells everyone about this howling, no one believes her. And even when she actually sees the werewolf at her front door, at the front of her house, she shoots it in the head with a shotgun and she comes across a woman, I can't, again, I can't remember what her name is, but she is very into the history of Drago and werewolves and she educates Karen and befriends her and she educates her saying that well if she did shoot this werewolf in the head then um, when it goes back to its human form there will be some sort of injury to the head as Karen shot it with a normal bullet and it didn't really affect it it didn't kill it even though it was shot in the head and it's brought up in the book that only silver bullets can kill werewolves, which is kind of standard now. This book is very graphic, it is very gory, especially when the werewolf or wolves are killing people. You can actually feel every single tooth or fang when this happens. There was a scene where a woman is bit on the head and she says that she can feel all the teeth going into her skull and that's the last thing that she can remember. There's a scene where a woman gets her throat ripped out. So these werewolves aren't cute and cuddly. They want to basically rip out your heart, drink your blood and rip you to shreds. Karen tells Roy about this and Roy thinks that she's kind of making this up for attention or something like that. And he has a confrontation with the wolf. I won't say what happens, but it's a good story. It really is. It really is an interesting story. And I like these characters, even though this was a very short book. I liked the writing style. I liked the gore, obviously. The characters in it were really, really good. There wasn't one that I didn't like. Oh yeah, the times that this book mentions coffee. This book has a coffee fixation, a coffee fetish. In fact, you can do a drinking game. So take a shot whenever the word coffee is mentioned in this book and guaranteed you will get drunk halfway through. No lie. So this is book one in a trilogy that Gary has done. I've got the other two books in my room right now. I know that there are numerous Howling movies. I'm not sure whether books two and three follow on from where the movies left off. And I'm not even sure if the books focus on Karen or whether they focus on different characters. But the ending of this book, again, I won't say what happens at the end, but this book does leave on a or did it really end kind of ending. Or is there more to the story? You can read this as a standalone, but as that kind of wink to the reader saying, oh, there could be more. I'm kind of interested to see where this story goes, especially because I'm not familiar with the Howling movies. There wasn't really much in this that I didn't really like. Despite its size, there were times that I felt that it dragged very slightly in parts. And when you're reading this, you're kind of looking at all the characters thinking, oh, it could be her. Oh no, it, it could be him. He's acting really weird. So you're kind of guessing to see who is the werewolf and who isn't. Kind of like a mystery crime novel. And yes, this book can be very predictable. I did guess a lot of things that would happen in this book. But does that mean that it's bad? No, it doesn't mean that it's a bad book. It was a very, very entertaining book. And I think I am going to give The Howling by Gary Brander a four stars out of five. I was going to give it a five stars. But because I thought it was a bit predictable at times. And yes, it did drag a few times. I want it to be fair, so I'm going to give it a four stars out of five. So if you're interested in horror, if you're trying to get into werewolves, even if you haven't seen the Howling movie, I would highly recommend this. This was an absolute joy to read. And it wasn't even that long. 
it was 190 pages so very very short so that's it guys that is my review of the howling by gary brander let me know have you read the book let me know have you seen the movie let me know what you thought of the movie and or the book and we can have a discussion about it down below in the comments so with all that the way all said and done have a great day read some awesome books and i will see you all in my next video